Science Division has proposed a design for a new communications network. A model network has been built at NPL to demonstrate the packet switching principle and to provide a service to the laboratory. The principal buildings have been connected by cables to the Computer Science Building, where the switching centre of the network is located. The principle of packet switching differs from that of circuit switching used in the ordinary telephone network. With circuit switching, a subscriber A calls an exchange and requests a connection to a subscriber B. After checking that B is available, the network sets up a circuit through which information is exchanged. The direct connection is maintained throughout the call, and A and B must communicate at the same rate. This is done by agreement between them and does not concern the network. The packet switching system includes storage in the network. Subscriber A calls the network to request some space for a communication with subscriber B. A sends information into the store at any speed, where it is accumulated until one packet of a thousand bits is collected. A is told when the packet is full to stop him sending further information and B is told that a packet is ready for him. He may now request the packet to be delivered to him byte by byte at any speed convenient to him. Now let us see how a subscriber makes a call through the NPL network. There are four illuminated push buttons. The orange one on the left is always lit when the network is operable. The red one is illuminated whenever the terminal is to receive information. Similarly, a green one lights when it is possible for a terminal to send information. While the remaining yellow one indicates if a caller is engaged. The lamp buttons are pressed to command the network. The operable orange button sends a hello signal to the network, which sets up a call. If unwanted data is being received, the red button can be pressed to interrupt the call, so that fresh instructions may be given. Pressing the green button dispatches a partly finished packet, while the engaged button is pressed to sign off. The way in which the buttons are used and the network operates are demonstrated through a collection of terminals connected to a network. These are a teletypewriter, a high-speed paper tape reader, and a visual display. These terminals are typical of those in use all over the laboratory. The heart of the network is a Honeywell DDP-516 computer. All data communication in the laboratory is handled by this computer through packets stored in its core store. Here, the operating system is being loaded into the computer. Now, let us see the network in use. If the Hello button on the teletype is pressed, the computer lights the green Send light to indicate dialing information may be inserted. Pressing the Send button dispatches the heading. The light remains green so that a message can be typed into the packet store assigned by the computer. Carriage return is arranged to dispatch the packet, which is now seen arriving on the display. Notice that, because of the high speed of the display, the packet came out much more rapidly than it was typed into the computer. This speed-changing property of the packet switch is further demonstrated if the tape reader is connected to the teletypewriter. When the teletype is dialed, the yellow engaged light appears. Remember, the teletypewriter is still calling the display. Returning to the typewriter, the call is cleared before again attempting a call from the tape reader to the teletypewriter. This time it's successful, and as soon as the send button is pressed, the tape reader operates. Notice that the tape reader moves only intermittently, although the teletype is operating the whole time. This is because the tape reader rapidly feeds in a packet 
and then has to wait until the packet is read out by the teletypewriter. However, if a call is made between the tape reader and the display, which operates about 10 times faster than the teletype, the tape now moves much more often because the display is calling the information out of the computer much faster than the teletype did. The matching of two terminals which accept the same message but at fundamentally different speeds is an important property of the packet switching network. Another feature is the use of permanently stored headings to give the equivalent of a private circuit. A tape of call headings may be read into the network through the teletype, which is a privileged terminal. The computer stores the headings so that when the hello button is pressed, a direct connection is made between the tape reader and the display. There was no need to put dialing information in from the tape reader. It had already been stored from the tape in the teletype. Now let us see some of the network applications. Small computers are used in the laboratory for analyzing experimental information. Now, this information might be fed to them directly from an experiment, or might have been gathered on an incremental magnetic tape for later connection through the network to the computer. The computer program is ready, and the data is fed in from the magnetic tape. After analysis, the small computer sends back the analyzed data perhaps a histogram on a storage display located elsewhere in the laboratory. This illustrates how the NPL network allows terminals to be sighted where they are most useful. Another example is a line printer with an input tape reader. The tape is being fed through the network to a computer for analysis and the results coming back to the line printer. By citing the line printer in our postal office, the hard copy can be delivered through the internal postal system to the appropriate building. Remember that all this is being done through an unattended central message switching computer. <laughs>